Hey guys, it is Easter. Hope you guys had a good Easter. Uh, we're on our way home from church. And look who's in the back seat. Hi, I'm not driving. And I'm in the passenger seat. So, guess who's driving? <laughs> Dude, both hands on the wheel. <laughs> you made me wait. Noah got his permit. Things are going good so far. You tell me you're scared. You tell me you're weak. But I know you're strong. What you think And I know it's hard Yeah, I know it's rough But we'll make it through And I'll back you up You're going, I'm going to I'll follow you through the black and the blue Whatever the mountain will come to the next Honey, I'm with you through life and to You're afraid I wish you could see that I think you're brave And if it all falls If it all breaks still be here We'll fix these mistakes Wherever you're going I'm going to I'll follow you through the black and the blue Whatever the So this was a busy weekend with Easter. I hope you all had a great one. Uh, it was also a really rainy weekend here. Um, I didn't get anything done outside and it's still sopping wet. So I thought this would be uh, a good time to talk with you about something that's been on my mind. It's an issue that keeps coming up in the comments and I'm assuming it's gonna come up a lot more the further down the road we get. I've been told recently a few times by a few different commenters that our viewers will, and I'm paraphrasing, hate us and turn on us if we ever decide to um, 
have any animals here that are destined to become food. To them, to them, this is an idealized fantasy farm where nothing bad ever happens. Um, and that if something like that were to happen here, basically that would be the end of our channel. Now, a lot of times when I bring up something that was said in the comments, you guys are really supportive and you say, you know, don't worry about these people. And like I said, this is gonna get worse in the future. So right now it's very minimal, but I'm making this video so that in the future, I can just reference people back here. I always say, if you're respectful, you can have any opinion you wish and you can share those in the comments and I'm totally fine with that. Interestingly, I get a lot of comments from vegans um, whose lifestyle I totally respect. To me, uh, out of conscience, they're living this way that I feel is very difficult to do. I think it's, it's a conscious choice every single time you take a bite of something. And I totally respect that. And I get a lot of vegans telling me that they don't agree with the lifestyle I have here. They don't agree with keeping chickens for eggs. They don't agree with keeping Daisy for milk. And they certainly wouldn't agree if we ever got to the point where we're raising animals for meat. They don't agree. However, a lot of times that is followed by they respect the fact that as a meat eater, I am taking responsibility for the animals that we consume and I'm giving them the absolute best life possible with just one bad day. Ironically, it's usually the non-vegans like me who comment saying, what a horrible person I am for even thinking of doing this. How could I eat an animal as cute as Daisy? And then they set down their phone and go back to their Big Mac. And I don't even take offense, honestly. Most people are so divorced from where their food comes from, because let's face it, it's not a pleasant thing to think about. I wasn't around way back when most people moved off of family farms and into the city where they had the convenience of just going to the, the butcher shop and picking up a package of wrapped up meat with no blood or guilt associated with it. I'm not separating myself from this group of people who make these comments, other than the fact that I wouldn't make the comments. If I'm being completely honest, when I hear of somebody locally who um, butchers their own animals for food, my first gut reaction is how can they do that? It seems so barbaric. I can't ever picture myself doing that. So I get it when I'm putting our life out there for thousands of people to see there's gonna be reactions like this. How can there not be if I react like this and I'm trying to live this life? The most carnivorous thing that people do, mostly in average society, is uh, cut up a whole chicken, maybe, to cook it. That's already been processed and everything, and it's just the chicken. And most people don't do that. They buy it either pre-cut or completely boneless, you know, so they can cover their eyes while they prepare it, throw it in the oven, and then be okay looking at it when it's browned up and ready to eat. When you're a meat eater, as 86% of the world is, um, and you're trying to be self-sufficient, raising animals for meat is something I'm gonna have to come to grips with. I'm not there yet. I wish I was. I wish that I was raised on a farm where all of these things are commonplace and they're normal. We take the responsibility for the lives that are taken so that we may eat. I wish it was as second nature to me as it was to my grandparents, and for sure, most people's great-great-grandparents. I grew up in the 70s and 80s in the suburbs where meat came in a white styrofoam tray covered in plastic wrap. Now looking at it as a kid, I still knew that was an animal, but it was certainly presented through a more sanitized lens. You know, I grew up with stories about the farm from my grandparents. You know, my grandmother's a famous line she has that her family ate everything on a pig but the oink. They were the last generation of my family to have that experience when my dad was probably in his teens, the early teens, they moved to the city. Uh, he lived in the city, raised me in the city, and only now am I coming back to country life, but with much different sensibilities than my grandparents had. The closest thing I've ever gotten to that is fishing and cleaning the fish that I caught, um, which I got pretty good at, I have to say, but it hurt my heart every time. 
that's just who I am. When I moved here, I had a hard time killing the gophers. Fortunately, I've moved past that. My point is, I believe that meat is the most nutrient dense, nutritionally available uh, food, especially protein on the planet. And I want to take responsibility as close to 100% as possible with the lives that are ended to make that happen for me and my family. So I'm gonna have to you know, come to terms with that at some point. And honestly, it scares me to death. It is so outside of my comfort zone to even picture myself doing that. And I honestly don't know the road that I will have to take to get to that point even. And I know it seems like I'm a huge hypocrite and there's a lot of us out there that you're eating meat, but you don't want to be a part of the process that it takes to go from living thing to your plate. I mean, how do you create this happy place where things living there will eventually not be living here anymore um, because of a, an action that I would take? The only animal deaths that have happened in my presence have been dogs and they've been devastating every single time. How do I look at an animal like Daisy and think like a farmer? You know, she's here for milk, but if she doesn't produce enough milk or if she can't get pregnant and therefore there will be no milk, how do you think like a farmer and be like, okay, well, she's going in the freezer and we'll move on to the next one. I mean, I haven't even come to the point of culling chickens that are no longer laying eggs. You know, they just get to live here rent-free in my hen retirement home. Now, I know a lot of you come here just as an escape to see what we're doing, um, to see the animals, and you're never gonna have to come to the point where you need to make this decision. And therefore, you certainly don't want to see the end result of any decision that I make. And you can rest assured that subject matter will never be here shown on the channel. It just won't. I still have a problem right now watching videos about that and I'm moving, trying to move toward that. So I know if you're not trying to move toward that, there's certainly no way you'd want to see it and you won't. And I know I'm going to get hate from both sides on this. I'm going to get hate from people saying, how could I do this? I'm also going to get hate from the other side saying, why are you such a baby about this? But I want to be transparent. You know, if you're thinking about this lifestyle, um, but you're having a problem with this, I do too. And I don't know how long it's going to take to move through the process of, you know, being okay with it if I will ever be okay with it. I mean, in July, Daisy will be bred. And that means a year from now, hopefully, we will have a new calf here. And finally, after years of waiting, we will have our own milk supply. If the calf is a girl, we might be able to keep her. Um, you know, on a homestead this size, an acre and a half, it would be difficult, doable, but difficult. Legally, on this size property in this county, you're only allowed to have one large animal on this acreage. Um, now, Daisy is half size of a normal large size animal, so theoretically it could be possible to keep her. If the calf is a boy, you basically have two choices. One, you raise it up and have it for beef. The second choice is you raise it up and sell it. In that scenario, most likely it would be somebody buying it for beef. So either way, the outcome is the same. We would just now have to go to a separate farmer and pay them to buy our own meat, which just looking at the facts seems ridiculous. But when the heart gets involved, it gets a lot more complicated and it seems totally rational. For me, it all comes back to how do you treat an animal with such love and kindness, knowing that it will eventually end up in your freezer. I don't know. I really don't know. It's April Fool's Day as I'm filming this and it seems totally appropriate because it seems foolish to be having these thoughts, but I'm putting them out there, risking ridicule because I know there's others out there that feel like me. There has to be. To cope, I do what I always do and bury myself in research 
I've done years of research to come to the conclusion that humans are omnivores. Um, even though I tried the carnivore diet, I tried the vegetarian diet. There are nutrients in meat you can't get from plants. There are nutrients in plants that because we don't have a way to ferment the plant material enough to draw all the nutrients out, they're just, you can't get as much of the nutrient as you can in meat. So I'm good with that. I have no reservations on if I should or can eat meat. My reservations come from having to kill the animal to eat it. So then I have to go to the studies to show that no matter what your diet, vegan, vegetarian, omnivore, carnivore, sentient life is lost in that process. It's an indisputable fact. Even PETA recognizes this on their website. But there is a fact that 55 sentient animals have to die, not including insects, 55 have to die to produce 200 pounds of plant protein. That's 25 times more lives taken than 200 pounds of beef protein. I highly recommend everyone, meat eaters, vegetarians, vegans, Take a look at that study. There's an article, I'm gonna put it down, I'll put a link down in the video description. Take a look at it. There's the, the huge monocropping fields that exist all across our nation. They are a loss of natural habitat. So when wheat or corn replaces these natural habitats, the animals in that area, the ones who weren't killed by the stripping of that land in the first place, they take refuge in these fields. That is now their habitat, but only until harvest time. Case in point, like I said, my dad grew up uh, when he was young on a farm and his least favorite thing and his worst memory of that was going out with my grandfather on the combine harvester. It is a violent and gruesome activity and I won't get into detail. All I can say is the animals who chose that field for their habitat are completely caught off guard. In addition, you know, commercial agriculture runoff poisons fish and waterways and countless insects, which more and more are believing that's sentient life, uh, are lost due to the spraying of pesticides. Not only that, but just looking at factory farming of animals and how awful it is. Um, not all of it, not all of it. I've, I've been corrected by viewers before. Yes, there are some who do it right. They're still not, you know, taking well, as well care of as Daisy or any animal that I would have um, or that are pasture raised their entire life. But for the most part, you know, seeing those, those conditions, all of this information helps me to move at least further down the road toward my goal. And that's all I can do is just keep moving further down the road, process my feelings and pray that it just kind of all comes out in the end. I will definitely take you along for that journey in the most delicate way possible. But right now, a meal that doesn't involve any meat.
Okay, this was a new recipe I've never done before, and clearly you can see that this is not happening. So um, we're scrapping the artichokes, and we'll save the mixture, and maybe I'll stuff some mushrooms or something tomorrow. So to be continued, see you next time.